So now let's discuss one final design type, namely hybrid designs, and then um, briefly discuss how we can choose among the different experimental designs, blocked, eventulated, and hybrid. So hybrid designs, as the name already says, are a combination of blocked and eventulated designs. You can see here that there's a block, a task block, within which participants are performing some kind of task, such as detecting infrequent stimuli and pressing a button to those. Um, and then there are, that's followed by non-task blocks and a different task. And I'll show you another example of a hybrid design in a second. So this allows you to have different types of stimuli blocked uh, based on a general type, so task A, and within a, diff a different block, you can have um, different types of, of groups, so A1, A2 in one block, and B1 and B2 in another block. And this has a number of advant advantages. It allows participants, for instance, to enter a particular cognitive state and maintain roughly the same state throughout the block. So this is, this is something that in some experiments we want participants to stay in a specific state, or we want to avoid uh, switching between different types of, let's say, decisions or stimuli to um, maintain that state and make it a little bit easier for participants. Right? If you have switching uh, a lot, then this gets quite exhausting quite quickly. Um, and participants may make more errors or so. And here's an example of, of a block like this. Uh, so we have, for instance, when we have prolonged emotions that we want to induce, and it makes sense to maintain that emotional state for 30 seconds or so. Uh, we call this thread blocks in this experiment, or no thread blocks you might have as well, where participants um, are then in a control condition. So here we, we threaten participants with random electric shocks that they can receive any time uh, and unpredictably so throughout this sort of prolonged period here. And then we compare this to behavior in no thread blocks. So the point here was to maintain a sort of longer emotional state or prolonged emotional state while participants, participants were performing different types of games in the scanner. This allows us to um, maintain a certain state, in this case an emotional state, but you could also think of a cognitive state uh, in, in these hybrid designs. But within each state, you then look at how participants perform a particular task. So under specific circumstances, hybrid designs are actually quite advantageous uh, and they're also commonly used. It has to also to be noted that while a sharp distinction is made, so we have blocked, eventulated, and hybrid, when you consider slow eventulated designs, you can, also, you can already see that there's some, some form of a continuum across those. So the distinctions are not so sharp. It's more like a continuum of different types of designs and how long or how short you want to present your stimuli for. Um, so it's better to view blocked and eventulated designs as ends of a continuum and you're making a decision on where on this continuum you want uh, or you get the best trade-off between the benefits and the costs of each of these types of designs. So what's the ex best experimental design for your study? Well, it really depends on what best suits your experimental question. So you have to choose among these three, um, and each one of them has strong advantages in particular cases. The advantages of eventulated designs are the, the main advantages that you can randomize stimulus order. So this makes it more interesting for the experiment. It reduces expectation. It reduces habituation, it reduces fatigue and, and boredom. So this is a much more involved experiment and that's why these are commonly used. You can also do a postdoc classification of trials and this could be something like correct versus incorrect trials, but it could also be in the, in the case of neuroeconomics, uh, trials in which participants chose to accept a lottery or to reject a lottery or trials in which participants made risky versus non-risky choices. So you can have some interesting post-talk analyses. Uh, that post-talk meaning you classify the, tri uh, the trials based on the participants' choices and the participants' performance. Um, there are also some types of paradigms that simply cannot be blocked. Those include oddball, oddball paradigms where we have some infrequent uh, um, events that occur. And this is simply something you cannot block. And 
many dis many types of uh, neuroeconomic experiments just don't lend themselves to block designs. First of all, because we're interested in variability in the bolt response or changes in the bolt response as a function of trial by trial changes in economic value. And second of all, because decisions kind of become repetitive if we have the exact same type of decision followed for the entire length of a block. So this is something uh, we typically avoid in, in neuroeconomics. But then on the other hand, you have block designs that have much higher detection power, but require a specific presentation, namely a repeated presentation of, of specific types of stimuli for the duration of a block. So it's really up to what you want to do in your experiment. So if you decide to go with eventuated designs, it's important to note that nonlinearity non still exists in eventuated designs. This was suggested by this previous study here that estimated the second and the third trial via subtraction um, and found somewhat nonlinear um, effects here uh, in that these estimated um, bolt responses do not entirely overlap with the first trial response or with a single trial response. Uh, especially when stimuli were separated by just two seconds. And so there was a follow-up study conducted by Utel and colleagues. Um, again, they presented these visual checker boards and then they separated them uh, either one, two, three, four, five, or six seconds, um, or one, two, four, six seconds, or zero seconds, which would be there's just a single trial. Um, and you can see that the bold response to a single trial shows the largest response. Um, but as you look at responses in primary visual cortex, um, these stimuli or the, the, these responses are somewhat reduced. So the, the signal change is reduced um, based on the amount of the separation between the two stimuli. So the shorter the duration between stimulus one and stimulus two, so if it's one or two seconds, the greater the reduction in the second bolt response relative to just a single bolt response or the first first response to the visual checkerboard. So, so this means that if you have two stimuli following each other very briefly uh, and the delay is just one second, then you have reductions in, in bolt amplitude by about uh, 40%. With about six seconds separation, and that's the red line here, the responses turn to about normal. So this is something to consider. It's uh, advantageous uh, to leave longer periods between events. Um, and however, that is not always possible in event, in event related designs. Um, so, there are some limitations that you need to consider when designing your experiments.